some important notes before we begin. This tutorial offers audio support. It is recommended that you use a headset while running this tutorial. The session duration is approximately 9 minutes. Hello and welcome to this e-learning tutorial on exploratory testing using the landmark tour. The goal of this tutorial is to deep dive into the landmark testing tour, fill gaps if any in the understanding and interpretation of this tour and to introduce the concept of a landmark coverage map. It is assumed that the listener has a prior understanding of the basic concepts of exploratory testing using tours. In order to quickly recap, exploratory testing using tours is based on the analogy that a software tester is like a tourist. There is always a lot to see but not enough time. There are lots of ways of exploration. The tourist is however keen to see the things important to him. This tourist metaphor is transferred to the world of software testing through exploratory testing. You may already be familiar with some of these commonly known exploratory testing tours like the landmark tour, the antisocial tour, the FedEx tour, the supermodel tour, to name a few. Every exploratory test tour is an approach, a mindset to test a particular feature. When a same feature is tested using different tours, it is the test approach that changes, though the feature is still the same. Every tour has a distinct name in order to improve communication. These tours are generic and can be applied to a wide range of features. This tutorial is intended to share some focused information around the landmark tour. The landmark tour is considered to be a very powerful tour as it can lead to defects of high severity and impact. The tour is also critical as it demands a good understanding of the application landmarks and their interrelation. The basic idea behind the landmark tour is that you pick the important landmarks of your application and you execute these landmarks in different orders. This tour is often confused as a tour that focuses on testing the most important features. This is not the case. It is important to stress that the landmark tour is all about the order of execution. The landmarks can be executed in different orders also with the intention of checking that the exception handling is working as expected. This means you should also try and test certain invalid sequences. Let us understand the application of the landmark tour using an example of a simple purchase scenario. A user needs to buy 10 laptops for which he'd create a purchase request transaction. A purchase request is merely an intent of the user. The organization's purchasing department consolidates purchase requests into a purchase order and sends it to the vendor. A purchase order is a confirmed order placed to the vendor for providing the required equipment. The vendor would then ship the goods to the company that are received via a goods receipt transaction. This is the record for the receipt of the goods. The vendor would also send his invoice for the delivery. This is same as a bill that the vendor would submit for the laptops that he is delivered. The invoice would be settled using the payment transaction. This final step is where the vendor is paid for his delivered laptops. So we've identified the five important landmarks of this part of the application. This is the first important step. A high level guidance regarding these landmarks at the planning phase can prove to be really useful during the time of test execution. At execution time, we normally would execute these landmarks as in order one, which is the straightforward scenario. However, this isn't the only order in which this scenario can be executed. 
the order two is also valid and you may like to test this order also. You can start directly from a purchase order without a purchase request. The order three is also valid as you can directly create an invoice even without a goods receipt and proceed for the payment. This is used at times when you need to pay an advance to the vendor. But mind you, the order four is not valid. You cannot directly create a goods receipt against a purchase request. A purchase order has to be created first. You may still want to test this for checking the error routines. The pictorial representation along with the tabular view together form the landmark coverage map. Such a landmark coverage map is useful both while planning and execution of the landmark tour and will help you stay on track. As you may already be wondering, there can be a large number of combinations possible with barely five landmarks. As the application and the test expert, you need to decide the important orders that must be tested. Testing in pairs is really helpful. Let us look at another example which focuses on using the landmark tour for state transitions. A purchase order once created and approved shall initially have the status as open. This means goods can be received against it. If a part of the ordered quantity is received via the goods received transaction, the PO item status would be partially delivered. So if the ordered quantity was 10 laptops and only six have been delivered so far, then this would be the purchase order status. If the entire ordered quantity is received via the goods receipt transaction, the PO item status would be delivery complete, which means all the 10 ordered laptops have been received. A PO can also be blocked to prevent any further goods receipt against it. A crude and a simplified state transition diagram in this case might look like this. You might as well treat each of these states as landmarks and execute the landmark tour like we did in the previous example. The order two is an interesting variation of the order one, wherein an open PO is blocked first, then unblocked, and then follows the same routine as order one. The order three is not valid, and you should not be able to receive any goods against a blocked PO. You may still want to execute this order. So you see, a gr you may combine certain landmarks from the state transition example with the landmarks in the earlier scenario example and deep dive. A great deal of variation can be created by choosing first a few landmarks and executing them and then increasing the number of landmarks and varying the order in which you visit them. Automated testing can be effectively used while executing the landmark tour. So in summary, a landmark tour is about picking the important landmarks and executing them in different orders. It is always a good idea to start with less number of landmarks and then increase them as appropriate. As the application and test expert, you need to decide the important orders that should be executed. A landmark coverage map shall help you stay on track and not get lost. Before we close, let me leave you with a few questions for thought. What kind of bugs can you expect to find using the landmark tour? Can you think of two areas in your application where a landmark tour can be used? The draw it, then test it approach is used in the landmark coverage map. Do you think it will be useful? Hope you found this tutorial useful. For any questions, you may always reach me at ajay.tikare at sap.com. Thank you.